Electricity in the universe has been identified and is present from beneath our feet in all life forms, minerals, plants, animals, humans, including our own biosphere, and even out to the furthest reaches of outer space. In episode one, we looked at how electricity is present wherever we find plasma. And since 99% of the visible universe exists in the plasma state, magnetic fields and electric currents are everywhere. This new paradigm of plasma cosmology reveals a universe that is dynamically interconnected in a vast sea of energies, truly emulating a living organism. This means the universe is actually alive. This also correlates directly with the ageless wisdom, which states that electricity is a living entity and literally the energy of life itself, linking the unseen with the seen, AKA spirit and matter. This connection was demonstrated through our investigations of the ether, which is really just another way to describe this more subtle type of electric energy, vitalizing all life forms and celestial bodies. Now with this understanding, let's look at our symbiotic relationship with the Earth on this episode of The Electric Bridge. Welcome to episode two of The Electric Bridge. We often ask ourselves, what is life? The esoteric philosophy regards life as a constant flow of electrical energy, while forms are temporary expressions through which life manifests at the dense physical level. While science is steadily uncovering the electrical nature of the human being, as of yet, electricity is dismissed as an insignificant factor in universal processes. But it is slowly unfolding as a truth that is knocking ever louder at the door of human consciousness. With this revelation, we can see the gradual shift away from a gravitational model to this new energetic paradigm of electricity and magnetism. From this perspective, there's no such thing as dead or inorganic matter. Every unit of life, whether large or small, not only contains the same fundamental essence of life itself, but also has its own degree of consciousness or sentience. This is the principle of hylozoism, which says everything is alive. Within us, the cells in our bodies have their own level of consciousness, and even down to the atom itself, having its own rudimentary kind of sentience, waiting to be awakened. The same is true in the macrocosm. The planets and stars are all a part of a larger organism which is also alive, evolving on its own level, and electricity is what fundamentally links everything together. With this in mind, we can take a fresh look at one of the big worries of our time, changes in global climate and weather patterns, viewing them from the angle of intelligent electrical life. In Earth's weather patterns, scientists are still debating the underlying cause of the thousands of electrical discharges taking place all over the planet at any one time via thunderstorms and lightning. They are generally thought to be due to atmospheric perturbations and perhaps the impact of charged particles from the sun, 
known as the solar wind. A further conundrum has been the recent discovery of strong electrical discharges taking place high above thunderstorms called transient luminous events. Spawning in the upper ionosphere, these dazzling displays include towers of red and blue light known as sprites. Rapidly expanding rings of luminosity, referred to as elves, and rising up out of the clouds, fingers of bright light that have been christened gnomes. Perhaps there's more truth to our folklore than we originally thought. These mysterious electrical phenomena are difficult to explain mechanically. They are assumed by scientists to be a result of the wind-driven charge separation taking place in the clouds far below. But in contrast to these orthodox theories of atmospheric science, pioneering thinkers in plasma cosmology regard the Earth as part of an electrical circuit in which the Sun and all the planets act as opposite electrical poles. In this model, thunderstorms are the exact opposite to what they are currently thought to be. Rather than electrical generators, they are dissipators of energy in an interplanetary circuit, lightning being the spark of a celestial current as it connects to the Earth. The colorful sprites, elves, and gnomes are the form that lightning takes in the upper atmosphere where the pressure is low and more accommodating. Similar phenomena are repeatedly reproduced in laboratories when an electric discharge is introduced into a vacuum tube when most of the air is removed. The colorful glows and filament-like structures that occur correspond to sprites. As previously stated in the first episode, the Ageless Wisdom regards the whole universe as electrical in nature. Yet the electricity we are familiar with on the physical plane is but the descendant of a great cosmic life that works on higher, more subtle levels of the cosmos and through the assistance of intelligent substance brought the outer universe into being. In this scenario, and as far as the Earth is concerned, all phenomena of orbital planetary motion, the cooling and heating of air, clouds, rain, storms, and winds are all due to the inner electromagnetic forces of nature, incessantly generating electric currents that restore disturbed equilibrium. This tendency towards dynamic equilibrium is something of a mystery to science. As the physicist Paul Davies commented, most computer simulations of the Earth's atmosphere predict some kind of runaway disaster, such as global glaciation, the boiling of the oceans, or wholesale incineration due to an overabundance of oxygen setting the world on fire. Yet somehow, the integrative effect of many interlocking complex processes has maintained atmospheric stability in the face of large-scale changes and even during periods of cataclysmic disruption. There is seemingly a higher form of intelligence that pursues equilibrium. The constant restoration of this equilibrium is known as homeostasis, a common property of all living organisms as they regulate their internal environment to maintain a stable condition. And the Earth itself is a living organism. 
Its global weather patterns and climate are guided by celestial intelligences in accordance with planetary and human karma. This, of course, is a far cry from the search for mechanical explanations by atmospheric scientists. Yet the primary causes of climate and weather must be sought far beyond the world of outer effects into the subjective realms of consciousness. This will no doubt be a stretch for many. Yet, as we discussed in the introductory video, keep an open mind while utilizing your own discernment and intuitive reasoning. The cosmos is a huge electromagnetic field, albeit complex and intricate, and all lives within it behave as charged particles that are forever interacting and exchanging their own specific qualities with one another. When we say someone has a magnetic personality, it truly takes on a deeper meaning. This new cosmology would clearly provide a basis for a renewed scientific and philosophical investigation into the mind-body connection and of subjects such as astrology, telepathy, and psychic phenomena in general. It also throws light on why spiritual teachings emphasize the responsibility we all have for our thoughts and emotions and the subjective climate in which we all dwell. Within an interconnected universe, the radiation of our state of consciousness has an influence on all lives within all kingdoms and on all levels, and either increases or decreases the quality of our overall environment. The Ageless Wisdom teachings say that accumulated collective human emotions and thoughts have an impact on the weather, and therefore we truly make our own climate in one significant sense. This is an intriguing thought in view of the current focus on climate change and the world crisis that has grown out of it. While global warming through carbon emissions may well be adding to this, there are many other factors at play from the esoteric viewpoint. To focus on one of them, it may be that our turbulent desire nature and selfish and conflicted thinking is adding to the unsettled climate of the planet. Even on physical levels, recent scientific investigations are indicating how this may be so. An example is the discovery of biogenic magnetite in the human brain tissue, by means of which the human central nervous system may interact with environmental magnetic fields. Current research is looking to see if magnetic material exists specifically in the pineal gland, as it does in birds and other animals, by means of which they interact with Earth's magnetic field for navigation. The pineal gland is situated in the center of the brain, in a tiny cave or resident cavity, and is often considered to be an energetic center that stimulates the intuition and psychic abilities. This may correspond to a resident cavity that exists between the surface of our planet and its ionosphere a spherical shell that is excited by lightning strikes from the 2,000 or so thunderstorms that are taking place around the globe at any one time. It has been discovered that the electromagnetic resonances produced here are of similar frequency to the alpha and theta states of the human brain and that other resonances also exist between various layers of Earth's electromagnetic ionosphere and the human brain. Interestingly, there are also fascinating correspondences between Earth's magnetosphere and the Sun's heliosphere. Research done by the HeartMath Institute 
with their Global Coherence Initiative has shown that at certain key times when the mass consciousness of humanity is focused on a single event, certain perturbations or fluctuations occur in the Earth's field environment, coinciding at the same time of those specific events, which can be measured with highly sensitive magnetic instrumentation. The Ageless Wisdom teachings extend this interaction to the etheric aura of the Earth, teaching that through meditation, resonances can be generated in the brain cavity in sympathy with the frequencies of the inner subjective realms of the planet, and their potencies distributed in service to all living beings. Experiments in group transcendental meditation have also confirmed this global effect. The ionosphere is just a part of the vast magnetic medium through which intelligent electrical life works. And the clue to this has been with us all this time in meteorology, the scientific term we use to describe the weather and climate. The Ageless Wisdom teaches that a veil of magnetic meteoric dust surrounds the Earth, and it is the expansion and contraction of this meteoric veil that affects climate change. While less meteoric dust corresponds to a cooling of the atmosphere and glacial epochs, an increase of meteoric dust corresponds to a heating up of the atmosphere and hot eras such as the Carbonaceous period. Geological records indicate that climate change has actually taken place repeatedly over eons. Scientific expeditions have dug core drills down into glaciers and examined the tiny bubbles of air trapped over thousands of years and have correlated high Earth temperatures with increased amounts of carbon dioxide in Earth's atmosphere. Carbon dioxide and carbonic acid are key indicators of periods of global warming. And interestingly, they are also predominant components of meteoric dust. Science acknowledges the fact that dust particles left by falling meteoroids can persist in the atmosphere for many months, and that particles might affect climate both by scattering electromagnetic radiation and by catalyzing chemical reactions in the upper atmosphere. However, the extent of meteoric influence on climate isn't yet recognized by science. Theosophy speaks of a meteoric veil surrounding the Earth. This meteoric veil is said to be many miles thick and to consist partly of dust rising up from the Earth, but mainly of interplanetary and interstellar dust. Most of it very fine, but also including larger bodies as well. The dust mainly originates from disintegrated moons, asteroids, and planets. Just like Earth's magnetic field, this meteoric veil partly acts as a protective shield for example, from the terrific energy of the sun. In addition, solar energies reaching the Earth arouse electromagnetic currents in this thick shell of meteoric dust. The electromagnetic interchanges between the Earth and its meteoric veil help to produce various meteorological phenomena, including storms, lightning, precipitation, droughts, temperature, and the auroras and they also generate some 70% of the Earth's heat. The varying influx of cosmic dust is connected with a succession of glacial and warm periods and associated expansions and contractions of the atmosphere.
The earliest theosophical reference to Earth's meteoric veil is found in a letter written by the Mahatma Kutumi, received in April of 1882. In it, he writes, Earth's magnetic attraction of meteoric dust and the direct influence of the latter upon the sudden changes of temperature, especially in the matter of heat and cold, is not a settled question to the present day, I believe. The present day of that time being, of course, October of 1882. He also mentions that gaseous matter is constantly being added to the atmosphere through the vaporization of meteoric dust. It is interesting to note that the discovery that dust particles recovered from the seafloor during the expedition of the HMS Challenger back in the late 1800s were extraterrestrial in origin. This was the first recognition that, in addition to being bombarded with meteorite-sized objects, the Earth also accumulates substantial amounts of sub-millimeter-sized particles, or micrometeorites. The subject of climate change is widely debated amongst many, yet the current scientific consensus is that global carbon emissions are the main cause of climate change. No doubt there are other causes as well. That said, our inquiry into meteoric dust is not necessarily trying to prove or disprove this scientific consensus. We are simply saying that there are likely many causes to climate change and meteoric dust being but one of them, and perhaps the main cause. When it is recognized that meteoric dust is an integral part of the electromagnetic veil that surrounds the Earth, and that human consciousness can subtly affect this veil, the collective responsibility we all bear to the lower kingdoms of nature through the right use of thought will also become apparent. Through the scientific use of meditation in accordance with the law, energy follows thought, humanity will then enter into its birthright as stewards of the planet, and the all-consuming purpose of human life will eventually be devoted to fulfilling the divine injunction contained in the great invocation. From the center which we call the human race, let the plan of love and light work out. The fact that humanity is an electromagnetic center in the vehicle of a divine expression has a destined responsibility to let this plan of love and light work out in all kingdoms of nature, pointing towards a truly awe-inspiring vision of the future. And the power of applied group will and right thinking will one day purposefully direct specific potencies into the lower kingdoms of nature to lift, redeem, and stimulate the evolutionary forces. While these thoughts may seem revolutionary, the idea that all substance is alive and comprised of tiny elemental lives has been with us since the dawn of human civilization in folklore and in the great religious ideas of planetary redemption. This is destined to come to the forefront of human thinking once again, yet this time on a higher turn of the spiral, as humanity takes on the mantle of Earth's stewardship and assumes planetary evolution. This process has only just begun, and therefore, it is essential that all of us who are awakening to this tantalizing vision of humanity's part in the divine plan join together to serve this cause.
In concluding this episode, we can say, humanity is in the midst of recognizing the holistic principles of nature, which are representative of the basic unity of all life. We have also looked at the electrical environment in which we all live and our symbiotic relationship with the earth expressed through weather and climate. Again, showing a much more holistic viewpoint, revealing that our collective consciousness has a powerful impact on the world, just like the cells within our own bodies have a powerful effect on our own health. Here we can see another correlation with the ancient axiom, as above, so below. This brings us to the end of our presentation. We hope you have enjoyed it. And in part three of the electric bridge, we'll explore the three fundamental types of motion in the cosmos, known as the three electric fires. So be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all our content. And if you're feeling generous, consider contributing to our Patreon as it greatly supports our work. In the video description below, you can find a link to the next episode, as well as the original article from which this episode was based. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the other side of the electric bridge.